Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this session, today we are going to see how we can configure or customize the base URL based on your environments. So normally if you see that uh, any of the web, uh, web applications that you are testing, in real time, whatever it is there, the same URL it might not be when you are testing that internally in your organization. For an instance, let's say that you are testing the facebook.com. Now, in reality, the Facebook uh, QA persons will not be testing that as on any of the UI test cases. They might not be executing on the HTTPS colon slash Facebook.com. Normally, they will be testing on an internal version of the same application where they might be adding some features, they might be doing some bug fixes. So that testing they will be doing internally. It could be a QA environment, it could be staging, pre-prod, prod. So like that different organization have different naming conventions. But for now, let's consider that there are like uh, three different, uh, what do you call, scenarios are there where your organization is uh, holding. One is like, let's say that QA, Dev, and then Prod. So these are the three different, uh, what do you call, uh, environments that your organization is separated. So as soon as the development uh, develops a particular functionality, they will be sending that into the development branch. So that would be, let's say that it's a dev branch, a dev environment. So maybe the URL would be dev.facebook.com. That's where the the test, uh, the uh, developers will be writing the unit test cases. Once it is successfully, uh, what you call tested and everything is implemented, probably they will be sending or deploying that to, to an a higher environment, let's say that QA. So it would be QA.Facebook.com. Now on this QA.Facebook.com, the testers will be writing their uh, user stories or the test cases and then they will be running against that particular URL. And then once it is tested completely, then this will move or deploy to your actual production that is releasing to the market where the URL would be Facebook.com. Right, so that is how actually the environments really works in real time. Now, in this case, if you see that in WebDriver IO, there is a way where you can specify the base URL into your particular project, but then it is hard coding, right? Let's say if I'm making it as qa.facebook.com. Now, in this case, what am I doing? That I'm keeping it as hard coded to QA environment only. Let's say that if I want to test it on the prod, then what I need to do? I need to come back to my code, pull the code actually to my local, change this to dev and then try to run it. Now let's say that I want to run certain sanity test cases into this prod. Again, I need to update my, what do you call this particular framework. Just for this particular string, I want to update. I need to pull the code, change it and then repose to the centralized repository, which is a tedious of task, right? Why can't we automate this? So for this, there is a quick way. It's nothing that we need to customize this based on what environment you want to really run it and then do the minimal changes or at least no change to your framework or to your project. So without changing your code base, how will you handle so that your test cases will pick up the specific environment applications? Okay, so for this, what am I going to do here? I will be creating in the same wdioconf.ts, I will create one variable actually here. Let's say that this variable would be uh, like, let's say base URL. Okay, so I will say ba let base URL. Okay. I will keep it as a string type for now and I won't be doing anything for now. And I will be creating one more particular variable. Let's say that I will be telling as a let environment. Now this environment variable value, I want to get it from an external source actually. I don't want to hard code inside my particular framework or inside my code. So how do we get it? Either I can use a separate JSON file or a text notepad. But then again, the same problem, right? Instead of here, I need to go to that file and change it. So whenever we run any test case, what we are doing, we are running a particular UR, uh, command, right? So npm run wdio. We are doing this. This is a basic command which goes to my package.json, this particular script 
tag actually here which is executing this particular tag actually here so what I can do here instead of running here what I'm going to do that I will be sending certain parameters in that which webdriver IO really gives me an option for an instance can I do in this way that I will be here I what I'm going to do I'll send my environment here let's say that I want to run it in QA or let's say that I want to run it in prod like this I can send it now what will happen this particular parameter or the parameter value will go along with this particular command and now my job is to grab this value from this command line to my inside my framework so that what will happen based on this I will be changing the URLs so that it would stays dynamic so that is what I'm trying to do here now the question comes how do we really grab the command line argument or the parameter inside this particular file so there is a way where it is called as process you can see that it's a node.js process dot I will say environment now this is basically it will be looking for from the command line okay not just because I am taking the command as an environment I have to specify it even I can specify here instead of env I will say that uh, let's say staging environment I can even do in this way also though still my this environment is a command actually here you can see that it's a node process command after this I will be giving dot what is that command actually so that is nothing but this staging environment let's say at this moment I'm just keeping it as uh, env so let's say that env equal to prod I'm sending this so here what I'm going to do I will be giving the same variable name only so that anything that I am assigning here it will be stored inside this variable now it is easy for me right what I can do I can create a collection or an array let's say that I will be giving like this let URLs equal to inside this I will be giving all the URLs that I need now I need to grab based on this environment assign that this particular URL to this base URL so a simple if loop will work actually here so what am I going to do here a simple thing is that I will be assigning this base URL let's say base URL equal to I will say that URLs here URLs of what actually environment that's it now what will happen you know this url is an array right array of uh, key value pairs are there now when i'm saying environment let's say that i'm sending the prod now url of prod so urls of prod means what this value so this value will be assigned here let's say that i'm sending here qa now what will happen now it will search urls of qa so here it would be like this urls of QA now what is the URLs of QA that is nothing but this value that's how you will be getting from this particular array okay now if I do this now my job is to change the base URL here where is that base URL here here it is there right I want to now comment this one and I will put base URL colon I will put that variable actually which at the top which I have assigned now what will happen based on these conditions it will pick up the value from that array and assign it to here that's it now wherever I want to assign or wherever I want to write a test case I'll say that browser dot url that's it now it will take care of everything there has to be a comma right like this I can do it now let's try to run it now for this I will write a quick uh, test case actually here let's say that uh, I'm taking any of the simple ones let's say alert I'm copying this one and paste it here and do the necessary change here quickly
Okay, so here I won't be hard coding anything. This is what we have seen in our page object model, right? Like the default one, you got it here. If you go to this page objects into this, you can see that browser dot URL and then there is a slash where you are specifying the path. If you are not giving this path, then the default it was taking actually from there. So the same concept I'm applying here and here I will be just renaming this to uh, base url test i'm just writing some name here okay now what will happen whatever the urls that we have specified into this conf.ts right so based on my command line it will be accepting and loading it here let's try to see that if it really works so i will just copy this one and put it into my script here okay so under test elements this one and I will be control tilt. Now what is happening? So basically I need to have at the beginning actually that one. So capital ENV equal to prod. Now in this case, what will happen? It should dynamically assign the facebook.com into the browser.url as my application under test. Let's see that. Okay, seems like like the facebook.com should have this www attached to that. Now let me rerun this and let's see. Now as you can see, it loaded the Facebook URL because we have chosen the prod, it took this one. For QA and dev, for sure these URLs will not work. So for this, what am I going to do here? Instead of taking that, I will make sure that, uh, let's say that I want to run for google.com. Okay, now when it is, uh, let's say QA environment, it should load the google.com. Let's say when it is dev, it should develop this one qabbox.github.io let's say that i want to run it so like this i want to run it now here i will be taking now you can see i want to run for qa now it should go with the google.com okay so it seems like this is also not taking let me get the proper url for Google, you know what the big problem I was doing is this colon is missing actually here. Now let's rerun this. And you can see for QA the google.com ran. Now see I'm not doing any change to my test cases actually or to my framework or to the code. I will just change the environment into the command line and it takes care of everything. And you can see they should run for this particular URL. So in reality, for sure, you might not have all these things. Like I said, qa.facebook.com, then dev.facebook.com, like this different things you can run yourself. Okay, so now if you see here, let's say that the user by mistakely put something else, let's say that dev1. Now in this case, if you see that it will start running, but it won't pick up any of the uh, URLs actually. And it will just say that invalid URL. You can do some a quick customization to that. And here we can even add some uh, conditions here. For an instance, let me quickly do that. Now, if you do this, so I will make sure one condition here, I'll say object, I'll let you know what is what am I doing here? So keys, and then you will say that URLs. So I'm capturing all the keys. Now key is what? QA, dev, prod. Now this is what the user need to enter, right? So it means that if this includes, if this includes, this includes what the environment, environment is nothing but what the user is entering, then what I'm, I'm going to do, then I will put this condition actually here. I'll do control X, I'll put it inside this, I'll say else, I want to write another condition where I will say that and I will say that console.error can't run this particular test case because you have to use environment equal to this one actually. So any one of these environments you choose, you need to choose actually to properly run it. For an instance, let's say that I'm using a wrong environment from the list. So then 
it should fail. Now you can see it's not even trying to run this particular test case. It just stops there only. But if I run this properly with the dev, let's say that, then it should run with the proper URL. And you can see that it ran properly this one. Like this, you can do different uh, this particular handling with multiple environments. See, this is not only the option actually that you can do. If you let's say that you don't want to keep this URL say, inside this particular web driver IO conf, what you can do, you can even keep a particular separate file. For an instance, let's say that I'm creating a data. Okay. And under this, I will be creating a new file. Let's say URLs dot ts file. I'm creating a dot ts file and I will be copying the same things into this. So let's say that I will be doing in this way. So I will be copy pasting module.experts and these are the details. Now I can really copy paste from here to this. Okay, and now let's come back to this WDIO. Now I'm going to comment actually this particular uh, set actually because I don't want to take the data from here actually hard coding. I will be keeping this data into this particular as a separate file. And then how do I read it now? Because now you can see it is throwing me error, right? So what am I going to do? I'll put a constant here. I'll put a constant here, C-O-N-S-T, and I will say URLs equal to, I'll say require. Now from where I will be getting it? I will be getting it from a file and that file is nothing but the data folder. And inside that you can see URLs. That's it. I'm just keeping name same as this URLs and this URLs so that the same code base will work fine. Same logic, just instead of taking the data from here, I'm taking it from the a separate file. Now let's try to run it and see if this really works. So I'm taking the prod environment for now and run it. And as you can see, the facebook.com really worked fine. There is one thing though I wanted to inform actually, like let's say that the URL is actually this one, okay? Now if I'm running this, it will ignore actually anything that is coming after this slash because the main concept behind this is that, I mean the logic of the web driver IO, they think that this demo URL, you shouldn't be adding here anything that will be added into your page object. Let me show you that. Now the same dev environment I'm running, but it will omit the demo one here. And you can see that it ignored the after slash whatever it is there. So the concept is that uh, WebDriver IO depends on the page object uh, classes. You will be adding your own logic. Like if you don't really following me, you can see that each page will have their own path. For login, there is a login. For secure page, there would be something else like that. If there is nothing, because this is base URL, right? It shouldn't be having anything actually on top of this. So hope this session is useful. Let me know if you have any questions into the comment section. So that's pretty much it for today. And do subscribe to this YouTube channel. We will be seeing some more interesting topics. Thank you for watching.